All right. And now I welcome on the 2021 Olympic silver medalist and now the 2024 New York City Marathon champion, Abdi Nagaya. Abdi, congratulations. You've had a little bit of time now to reflect on the victory in New York City. I hope you're enjoying a little vacation. How are things going? Thanks, Chris. Um, all was good uh, with my family here in Eldoret, Kenya. Uh, yeah, it was hectic uh, days after the race. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, it's part of the game. I'm enjoying it. Even now when I'm recovering, I, I'm still reminded uh, that my training mate, Geoffrey, is running a Singapore marathon and uh, he was doing track sessions. So I went this morning to see. And even I was hiding myself with a lot of clothes, but everyone recognized me easily. <laughs> so, you know, and then it's funny, you know, I'm coming this track so many years and those people that have seen me, the athletes there on the track, so many years training there. And then, um, you know, to achieve something that you can see, they, they, they really, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, are happy with me, happy for me. And yeah. It's good. What makes the public reception so different, you know, compared to coming back and winning from the Olympics in 2021 with the silver medal. But now you won your first world marathon major. Does it feel like more people pay attention to the majors in in E10 and in Eldoret? Or like, wh how, how do those two compare when you've been walking around and, and meeting with the public? I think I think both are, are kind of the same. I think more media now than, than the Olympics. Not even because of the Olympics, there are so many athletes. And now it's you're just the only one, I think, uh, who has big achievement. And in Olympics, you're coming back with how many gold medals, you know, especially when, when in Holland, they're really good in sports. So, but uh, the athletes here, I think because, um, yeah, they see the world majors, you know, the Champions League here. Uh, so it is it is a big deal. And um, and they, they also in the field, so like, I was always close. Uh, I always said I, I I want to win and I can win, but it was not there. And now to beat maybe the strongest uh, field ever in New York, uh, yeah, they really uh, appreciate that. And and it's funny that you know the Kenyans they they will appreciate or they have more respect for you then when uh, you beat those athletes because you know everyone is trying to beat another athlete. So it's not like oh you beat a Kenyan and you're not happy for you. No. It's, it's it's kind of individual sport so everyone training there you know one person can win yeah. so uh, when they see you coming there every year coming back to their play uh, Eton and Eldoret and and I have a lot of also a lot of Kenyan athletes I give them advice I'm always open person for them yeah they can you can see they, they really appreciate that so the last time we saw each other was in Kenya I was visiting the NN running team in the global sports camp in Captagat and then you know I made a visit up in Eldoret and in E10 and we got to chat a little bit about your life story and how for you I guess the, there's been so much in your life between then and getting to the Olympics and then what that did for for your life so let's catch up on the last year since I saw you in June 2023 how were things going because you know for you in the spring you run 204.45 PB national record, you win the Rotterdam marathon. So, you know, things have been going really well in training. How have you elevated and, and gotten better in the last year? Um, yeah. So, you know, I just, you know, I always try to improve things. I always try to improve my trainings. And um, I think one thing I did really good was, um, you know, the focus was right. I think even, even for Paris, the Olympics, even for Rotterdam. Um, so, um, you know, to be honest, Rotterdam, the field was not that strong. But again, I was running really easy. That 2-4 was it felt really easy race. Uh, I was fresh after that. I even partied until in the morning. So I was. it was easy race for me. And then um, I think I went, I was talking to my coach and we were just, um, you know, looking back like, okay, what we think really what went wrong for Paris. So you can still not deny it, even if you want to move forward. Uh, and so we were like, so he said, maybe you were, you know, too, too, um, too fast to focus. You wanted to, you went early with a lot of focus, you know, and now New York, I was like, even if I wanted like revenge, I was doing things like really step by step and the trainings, I was not looking to my watch. 
and it came so automatically easy easy while um before paris i was focusing too much on like let's say when we were in june like what time i was running and then maybe get a little bit nervous or maybe not even nervous but try to push and not and not let your body do it mm -hmm. uh so yeah so a lot of up and down you know running a great race and then the great disappointment i have uh, until now in paris um and then in 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 less than two months, um, coming with amazing shape, you know, even when I was, you know, speeding up and 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 getting going away from Chapet, I still had, uh, for my feeling, it's still two gears, you know, I was still able to sprint much faster. So I was just testing 600 meters to go. That was like, you know, 600 meters, 400 meters, 200 meters, I had like three different gears for that. And, and 600 meters was enough for that first gear. So um, it is crazy, like, uh, you know, yeah, I think that's sports, you know. It is also mental thing. It is timing things, fine tuning, you know, the right time. And so, yeah, a lot of uh, ups down. Yeah. The last year. I remember we were discussing just sort of how nomadic like your training setup is. Sometimes you set up camp in Ethiopia, sometimes uh, spend some time in Kenya and you move around a lot for the training for the Olympics. What was your setup? And then I remember, you know, you were doing some work with Patrick Sang, your self coach, I think for the most part, but now you've got a Dutch coach that's consulting you. What's the setup? So before the Olympics, I knew I did the same things, but I think I changed a little bit. You know, as I said, you know, focusing too much, um, not the right moment. Uh, for example, I skipped my last four long runs. I used to do my long runs in Kaptagat. And I was thinking, you know, I didn't, I did tarmac because of the hills in Paris, and and I was doing really fast, you know, I did 40k in two two twelve uh, wow. on 400 meter elevation gain. So it, the long run was amazing and the speed was amazing, but the, the mid that in the middle was not good. So um, yeah, and then somehow you think um, I'm in, in in good shape, and even they can see in the system that I was I was okay. You, they can I think they divide whatever, they can see like my watts or my uh, power is the same as now for uh, New York, but something something was wrong. <laughs> you can say it's the same, but uh, so maybe mentally I was thinking I'm not good enough or uh, I did maybe wrong, wrong, wrong trainings. So yeah, as I said, as you said, the nomadic life um, changing things a lot, but this year I want to be stable. Uh, even last year I was stable. from okay, uh, was done. Even Paris if it went wrong, but I was in the same place in E10. Uh, I do my trainings in Kaptagat. I'm not training with Kaptagat, uh, with Patrick, but I'm, I do my trainings in Kaptagat, the long runs. Uh, some trainings in the middle of Eldoret and, and E10, and mostly in E10, the rest. So, um, yeah, uh, that, that, that coach is giving me more advice. It's like I give, I do myself 95%, and that 5% is like calling each other on Monday, telling him why I'm, do, why I'm doing this, certain things. And uh, he'll give me green light. And if he said, maybe you can do this one, maybe like that, if you think, I, uh, if you are okay with it, I will change it. But it's more that I have someone looking at me. Like even now, um, you know, I go with friends and holiday, but still I have to bike or do exercise. And if I don't do nothing, you can see still. So I have someone like looking at me now, you know, okay, let's do today one hour bike, you know? So that's good that you have someone uh, is watching you on CCTV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell me the story of what happened in paris because that you ran most of the race and then just dropped out with one kilometer i think to left to go so what exactly how did that race unfold for you and what were your feelings when you when you say like a little bit of lack of confidence was that already on the starting line or did that happen in the race um i think it happened um uh, it was before but during the race and the, during the days before the race i was feeling comfortable uh, what happened was, you know, I did uh, 20K uh, two weeks before the race or two and a half weeks before the race. And I did almost the same time, uh, the same course as before Rotterdam. Same week, same days before the race. But after I finished, I told my friend, uh, I, I don't feel okay with it. I don't feel comfortable. And, and we were like, what, what is wrong? And I don't know. I, it's just it's not feeling well. And, and it's still in my head, I was like, oh, I'm missing some trainings. Uh, even if it is championship race, I should do some trainings that I missed it. Uh, I didn't do it. And um, and then during the race, it, everything was okay. 
uh, I had some small accident with uh, uh, the winner of London Marathon, I think 20K drink station. And uh, I think it, 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 it affected my hip, my mm. right hip. And I was still feeling okay, but I can feel my legs like not strong as it should be. And normally it's also the, weak, the weaker leg. And when, when Tola went away, I closed the gap nicely. I was still okay, not nervous. Even if I was number 20, I closed it the first group again. I thought I was just still in front of us. And I went, oh, no, the big hill is coming. But as soon as we hit the, the big hill, uh, up to like 200 meters, totally complete dead leg. My right leg was totally like, like that. Not even like that. It was like, I was not feeling even. And I was like, what is going on? So already you think like, you know, uh, okay, it, it's because of the, because of the, uh, the accident. But still, I think if I was strong enough, I was able to handle it. Uh, so I don't know why that that muscles were all off. Even after that, we checked with my physio, and it was all off. You know, that that muscle was like completely out of function. So um, and then my lower back tried to take over. You know how body works, so it was not working well. Uh, and then I was still okay, not nervous. Uh, at thirty k, I was still okay. Thirty two, thirty three, and I was thinking, okay, the last six, seven k, I will close. I hope I, I will close, you know, now I was going to silver or bronze. And um, and then I see, uh, yeah, Kenya, they always call me whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then uh, at 35K, you know, I saw, or let's say like 33, 34, I calculated and I was like, there's no way the next five kilometers I can close to Bashir at the group. I have to run like 14, 0, 5 or something. Um I'm feeling like the hills and everything. So I was like, do you want to finish, you know, with, with uh, no, I, I didn't have a lot of pain, but you will damage more, you know, you, you will need more recovery or, you know, this is enough. You know, I, was, I still, this is my third Olympics. Um, there's no need that I'm, you know, because of the Olympics, I have to finish. I'm not at stage now. That was my first Olympics, 2016, you know, then I have to finish. And maybe the last one, I also, I also try to finish. But now I'm, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not about finishing. I want to get medal. And if not, I want to save my body as true as that so mm -hmm. um i just uh at 36 actually i stopped i stopped my watch and then i looked around and i was like you know there's mm, there's no fan so you better jog out for a kilometer so i started jogging uh and um and it was really you know not annoying but so many people were expecting me and then they see me jogging and they're shouting up to go and i was like oh they don't know what's going on you know they don't know i have to stop and and as as closer I came, I saw like more Dutch fans, more people know me more, and I was not able to handle it. And I was like, "There's no way I'm going to the finish like this." So I stepped out of the course at forty one or forty something, and then even even at the finish there is like two hundred meter, like the stadium they built. I said, like, "There's no way I'm, I'm I don't want to cross there." And and some of the guys of the administration, I told them, "Please, can you get me behind?" They took me from behind stage, behind the podium. Yeah. And so I, from there I came to the, to the finish line and then straight to the tent. So I ran the marathon that night, uh, the nighttime one, and wow. I also wanted to drop out, but it's so it was such a hard course to drop out because the only way you could go is just keep going straight, and it yeah. was annoying. It was so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so after that. How soon after that, the race is over, you're back in the hotel room, do you start to think about what's next or how do I recover from this? Yeah, I think that one is more about mental, like, okay, you know, it's really happened. It's like dream. I'm going to the tent. I see the, the medals. Uh, and then, you know, and I think it was a good thing to see, like, and to hear uh, Tola and, and she getting the medals and the other guys. Like then I know it, it, it really happened, it's done. And, and then uh, I was in the fan and then also I met Elliot Then I met other athletes who were dropped out. Well, everyone who had his own story to disappear, that, that was disappointment, disappointed. And, and I say, you know, it's part of the game, uh, but still I can feel like, uh, for me, it's like much harder, you know? Of course, Elliot is, is great. He, he can go with, with the head up. He can say, no problem, but I can do that. So it, for me, it was like really painful, but I, I told myself, you know, uh, you can choose, you can choose to, what shall we choose? One day or, or a week or a month to, to get to feel disappointment the whole time, to feel uh, sad 
uh, and then I was like, you know, as as soon as better, uh, that it's it, it's it's over. So uh, for me, it was like, you know, actually half day is enough, half day, and and, and we are done. I went to the physio, I checked, and then I tried to talk myself like, you know, have make jokes about it. It's done, it's over. Next, next, you know. And and I told my manager, I'm not going to Netherlands. I like book my ticket to uh, Kenya. And I was in Nairobi the, the 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 night of the closing ceremony. I was in Nairobi with friends, just chilling. And I was telling them, yeah, I was there in the Olympics. And then no way, you know, some friends they, they didn't know. <laughs> That's actually good that they don't know much. <laughs> and I, I was in Nairobi, and the next day in Eldoret, and uh, like nothing happened. And I was pretending nothing, nothing had happened. But it all started when I went back to E10, you know, after 10 days, start training again. You know, how you jog, you know, the first 10, the first easy run, the first uh, training, the first. And, you know, no problem, you know, I can feel sad, but I will do my 10 kilometer easy jog. And I went to Lorna Place, high altitude training camp. I was staying there. Uh, you can wake up, eat breakfast, and then go to the gym, come back, take lunch, go for easy jog. So many other people are there for, you know, who want to run. So, uh, inspiration enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, and things went really smoothly, you know. Our, every day I was thinking about Paris, uh, but like you know, it is there. It's, it's not going away even. It's just there. And then like you know, don't worry, uh, no problem. Just be there. Let's be there. And yeah. and my things went amazing. Really, like in three weeks, every training I was improving. Every training I was improving, and I was running the fastest ever I had run even in on track the last three four sessions. Yeah, and the last two sessions gave me like really confidence. Especially the, the one before the last. It was like, wow. I remember this Ellie and the guys doing in Joffrey back in 2019 and 18. And I did the same times. And I was like, wow. And like feeling easy. And uh, and then I knew I, I was ready for New York. What did Elliot say to you when you both met up after the race and you both had dropped out? Do you remember? Uh, even Patrick was there and his physio Peter and we make a lot of jokes. So I, I think we were making a lot of jokes, you know, just to forget that the moment you know, we are not analyzing anything. Uh, he was talking about people getting his shoes and everything and, and his t-shirt and uh, and I was talking about the hill, the, the, the leg and Peter was talking about when he was giving me massage back in the day, so painful. So we, made, we were making a lot of jokes, I think, and nobody was talking about the race. Yeah. So there's 85 days between the Olympic marathon and the New York City marathon. And this whole time, you once you get back to training, everything's starting to go well. Your confidence is building. The workouts are going excellent. You show up to New York and there was no, you weren't in the press conference. Like, you know, a lot of people didn't re- remember that you were in the race and you're sitting on the secret like it's like you, you you are the only person in New York City who knows how fit and how confident you are. How did that feel to not have, you know, all of the attention, no media, no anything before the race and just let your running do the talking on race day? It was really uh, it's like I was just waiting for them like, uh, because I, this, was my, this was my fourth time. Yeah. And I had the, the least uh, media attention now. And I was feeling okay with it. And it was actually nice because I can I was able to focus nicely. Not that it cost you much energy, but I was just, you know, much relaxer than normal. Um, and uh, I just went to, I did only one thing at the expo, uh, meet the uh, New York Roadrunners. Uh, and the rest, I was just, you know, uh, when I read the, the things and, you know, to five favorites and now I'm looking there or other people talking about the favorites and, um my bib number number seven and you know i was just you know i was just uh like like waiting like to to do some damage on sunday so uh it, i was i had a lot of confidence and i just knew and some of my my confidence was building up every day because normally when you arrive you feel also sometimes not sometimes not lazy but this time i had no jet lag feeling the first easy jog was i was like nothing I arrived midnight even. It was not, not easy to, to arrive at midnight. Uh, on my bed, I was Wednesday, 11, 1 p.m., 1 a.m. Uh, and next day, I was jogging like, like feeling amazing. I can race now. And then the next day, the same. And the next day, the same. Like, uh, I, I'm sleeping nicely. I woke up like 5 in the morning, like fresh. 
I was sleeping easily at 8, 8, 8 30. And normally I was, you know, just chatting around and sleeping at 10. And now somehow the fox was like, not, 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 um, uh, uh, it, it, it was coming easily. I was not forcing the focus. I was just, I just wanted to sleep and then I was sleeping nicely and everything was perfect. Everything, um, everything went smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, yeah, the race day, I was even able to talk to the, to, to everyone, like to Bashir, what you want to do and to Joffrey and to other guys and, uh, to, to tease them a little bit. And then the, the, the gun went off and I was like, you know, that total focus. Yeah. When the gun goes off, you know, in those conversations with Bashir, with Joffrey, what were what was the plan? Because in the there was not not a whole lot happened for the first fifteen miles. Everyone was bunched together. Um, actually, if you if you watch the race back, I'm, I was the one who was making sure that nobody was running away. So even that, that some American guys, a Kenyan guys, uh, the Kenyan guy who was running his first marathon was making a lot of search. Uh, one time Chebet, I was the one who was every time, you know, putting them back and then everything was was coming back normal. Like people will not see that, but a lot of times, even from the first kilometer. So uh, I was able, I was making sure like nobody will run away, like because that will affect more the race and, you know, I don't want that. So if someone was going, I was right there and then they would stop, you know, up this there. So they were stopping. And uh, even the, some Americans, they were talking to each other, let's go. And I was like, I'm behind you. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> So there was no way they can go. One time we tried, I was like, shall we go? Like we were like, I think three of us. And then I was like, no, no, no need. So, um, yeah. And then the Kenyan guy, I told Joffrey, can you talk to him? Like he's, he's, he's doing fat, like he will kill himself and also kill us. So Joffrey went to him and, and said, hey, this is a marathon. And he, and he did do that again. And um, actually at the, 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 the half marathon, when Tola went in front, I was, I was telling myself, okay, now it's the big boy's time, Abdi. Joke's over. Uh, and I was just right there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was, I, I think I was the one controlling the, the race that it will not go, you know, what you had some years, someone will run away. Um, so I was making sure, you know, the, the big group was there. And I was actually, I was helping them that every time they close it. But, and then I was telling myself, if I, if I really go with the person and you will slow down, they have to close again. So either... Either time I have to I have to close up so I can stay now with a nice rhythm with this person, then wait and then we have to close faster time. And I never knew we run two seven. Like after the finish, I was thinking I run two two eleven. And then I hear Abdul Nagay two seven. I was like two seven. That's not possible. We cross like sixty five something high. How is that possible? And then we run sixty two zero something. Crazy. I never felt like that way. When Evans Chibet accelerates at the on the south uh, coming off of the bridge did you know this is it now now we're going yeah uh, and 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 Chebet can kind of can sprint like crazy um I, and i and i'm seeing like going down and and i'm feel, i'm thinking i'm sprinting like this is my max even i was telling last jeffrey like what, what what kind of sprint was that and i said i don't know i have to follow him we were going like this <laughs> it was like cross country <laughs> So even he was not happy with it, but then yeah, my my uh, one of my plan was uh, I think that my three steps was you know don't be dropped on that bridge, uh, whatever the speed is I have to close on the first avenue, and 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 you know survive under thirty six. So uh, when Chebet speed up, I was like okay this is it, and I don't care how fast you go down. Once we come down, you know I'm not that good in going down that fast, and I'm you know also I'm trying to you know to stay uh, healthy, you know uh, not damage things. Uh, and not speed speed so much that you, you get lactate or something, you will feel later. So I was like, the first avenue, I will close that. And you can see when we come out of the first avenue, I'm still behind. I was telling myself, there is no way they can keep this pace for four minutes. And I can keep this pace I'm running now for 10 minutes. That that that, that was what I, I told myself. So no, no problem. I was just closing it. And I can see other people coming back or uh, dropping. But I was focusing on, on the in front, like Chebet and Tola. And I was telling myself, there's no way this speed they will keep up for four, three minutes. And I can do that for 10 minutes. It was really a high speed. So, and I close it easily. Yeah. Going up First Avenue and I think into the Bronx before you guys finally turned back into Manhattan. It was a very cool moment where you see the five guys in the front of the race are, well, four of them are past champions. 
And only one guy in the group has never won the New York City Marathon. And that was you. What are you telling yourself? You have an Olympic silver medal. This World Marathon major title has been escaping you for the longest time. Is there any part in your brain where you're like, today is my day. I want this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was telling myself there's no way this will escape, this will escape away from me. Especially after we passed 36K. I was telling myself there's no way. Uh, even if if they speed up, you know, I have to go deep today. Uh, I think I, the same as I at the Olympics, you know, my confidence is building, building, building. And I'm running much easier, much easier. And um, I was able to read their faces, check up everything. Um, Sometimes if someone speed up, you know, come next to them and then stay behind them and then just make them crazy. Like, okay, what shall we do? You know, and um, and and mostly Chapet can do like very fast 200 meter. And if you give them that moment a gap, he will increase more. And even sometimes I was thinking, you know, what? let him give him more, so he will increase more, get tired. And but I, I'm there, I can speed up the same. So I was giving the confidence that he's getting away from me, but he was not getting away from me. So uh, I was able to, you know, to to play around and uh, my confidence was building up, building up. And as you said, you know, I was telling myself, this, this is my moment. There's no way this will escape or will escape. And even even at the end, you would think like, imagine if this happened. No, it will not happen. You're not talking to yourself, you know. So, yeah. You go into Central Park and it's just you and Evans Chibet. And it makes for a very epic battle between the two of you where you, like you said you're accelerating he's still there he's accelerating you're still there at one point in the right behind you guys Tamrat Tola is coming back and he's closing hard and I think one of you two noticed and looked back and saw it what's your thought or reaction when you see the Olympic champion the reigning New York City champion the guy who holds the course record is coming and charging fast to close the gap again. Did that trigger something for you to go? Yeah, I think some, some someone from this spectators they filmed really well that moment. Uh, I checked again because there was some I, I don't know bicycles or other people running outside the course, and I was in the women's. So I checked double double and I saw it's Stola. So I went to Chavet and I told him it's, it's Stola, and then he didn't speed up really. I was thinking that he will speed up. <laughs> so he did really, he did it, but not not the fast. But I was feeling great shape. I, I I felt he was not speeding up, but I think he also pushed a little bit. And then I checked double and you see like very easily, you know, I, I pass him and I give him already three meters and he will close that and I just speed up very easily. And I think that moment break also uh, Tola uh, motivation. Uh, so yeah, um, I, uh, that, that video was really nice to see. You know, someone was feeling really from the side. And you can see, like, I check double and I check double and I just go, like, phew, very easily. Uh, is that up. fear? Is that adrenaline? Because he's so good and you you know you have to defend the move? Uh, no, never fear. I was like, there's no way I'm giving you a little bit of uh, motivation. I, I know when, when someone is closing, you, they can even get your energy from you. So I was like, um, there's no way this happened. And, and I was feeling strong. I was, I was able to speed up more. So... Um, yeah, I, I never feared that. I was able to go much faster if I wanted. So I just speed up a little bit and, and we already make make things good. Your final mile was was 447, but even Chibet was still close within that final mile. When did you know you broke him? So uh, 600 meters to go, I was even telling myself, don't go too early. Because um, in New York, somehow, I think I have the longest one kilometer, the last one kilometer. Yeah. I mean, any other race, when you see 1K, is so fast that it can, but New York, you see 1K, and maybe it's the hills, I think. And then before you, you know, still you have like two more meters, turns. Yeah, that's meters. the thing. <laughs> meters. And then you go, and then you see 600 meters. Like, this 200 meters is really long. <laughs> so I was telling myself, don't go too early. Don't go too early. I know this 1K is long. And I waited until, and I knew there was snow, you know, after that, the last going right. It's very uh, narrow and a small hill. And I was like, there's no, don't give him any chance that because once you go earlier than you, the downhill, it's, you know, it is danger. And um, I think because of the other lane, I was just building up the speed and I was, okay, when, when shall I go? When shall I go? And there's a moment just, I, I just went 600 meters to go without thinking. And, 
and I still I still knew I can go another two gears, so no problem if he, if he come. And I was waiting that he come, and he didn't come. And I was like, okay, that, that was easy. And then I just didn't speed up more. I was like, you know, just save the legs for a downhill. Anything can happen. A cramp can happen. So I was still even able to think more. Don't show up with, uh, don't show off with a big sprint. I was just, and then I just looked back, and the gap was growing, and and then I knew. What is it with the Dutch who just love this need for speed, where it's like uh, you and Max Verstappen, the way your brain is wired, thinking I got this gear, I'm gonna I'm gonna go as fast as I can at the very end. It's really funny to to hear how your brain operates, and you think of it sort of like a race car in the marathon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that is when. Uh... Because you can see, you know, you can feel. Can I can I go much faster? Even when I was winning, when I was winning the first time Rotterdam, uh, uh, Lul Helge Brasilasi, he was telling his teammates, "Why didn't you tell me some guys would train with me later?" That up to had speed, and I said, "Yeah, we know." But he said, "I was thinking I have a lot of speed, but I was giving him. I was training with with nice technique, but I knew I had another gear to go, so I was just waiting for him, waiting. I was just calculating the meters, like hundred meters, two hundred meters, one hundred fifty, two hundred, hundred fifty meters, and then I just went." Put the last one uh so yeah i think it is the, the calculation you, you have you you still have to have some extra thing if it's needed are you the most talkative professional marathoner in a race because you with the way you told chibet about tola when you're talking to joffrey or or because it sounds like you talk a lot during the marathon yeah yeah I talk a lot. I tell people, you know, when pumps coming, you know, don't, <laughs> don't, mostly I do for myself, you know, don't touch my legs. Some of them, I can see someone have, someone is breaking or the pace going down now. Uh, I really have to tell them, you know, slow down. And um, yeah, if I see someone aggressive, I was like, you know, there's no need. At the start, I always say, you know, there's no need to push. We have to run 42 kilometers. It's not 100 meters spring. Just to cool down things because everyone has this attention. Tension. And and it's really sad that someone will fell down. But she had that his first marathon. So um, so every race I say that you know, not pushing my friend. Relax, relax. You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm the most the talkative. Yeah. All right. So then you cross the finish line. Your first world marathon major victory. You put your hands on your head and you pumped your fist. What was that emotion that you felt crossing the finish line? Really like. Um, you know, I did it, and I run four times in New York. This was my fourth time, um, and I know how big World Majors is. And I think the most was uh, because you were running. I, you know, I, I said I was, I was doing my checklist. I was, you know, I was thinking, uh, done, done, done. This one done. Uh, not the drop at the bridge. Uh, drink well. Thirty-six uh, k. If I survive, I will win the race. Wait until this, you know, eight hundred meters to go. You know, I was in 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 a flow, and then. It's like the moment to realize was there then. Like, I did it. Now you are at the finish. And it was different than the Olympics. In the Olympics, I was for three, three kilometers long, like in the sky, you know, like in, in, in celebration. And this one was like at the finish, I was still looking for emotions and uh, things that was a little bit different. And it, it came later, you know, when I'm in the hotel and after that. So uh, it was that, 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 that way, it was a little bit different. But yeah, at the finish, I knew. Um, you know, like the job I had to do and I did the job it was like that. So this year you ran a half marathon PB of 60 minutes and 21 seconds. Your marathon PB, you said, was felt easy to the easiest 204, 45. The guys you beat, you know, Chibet's a 203 guy. Tola's a 202 guy. How do you see yourself? You know, New York is a course that is very challenging and hilly and no one's going to run, you know, 201, 202 in, in New York. But you have this fitness and you said you're doing workouts that reflect Elliot and, and Joffrey's workouts in 2019. That was like a very, very peak time for, for those guys. So what do you believe is your p potential even now while you're, you know, still you're 35, but you're still got your best running ahead of you? Yeah, um, it's really, um, yeah, even I'm looking forward for that, it's, uh, to run a, f a flat course. Uh, but it's challenging because um, uh, some race can be it can be a fast day, but other other times not. Rotterdam, it can already guarantee you a fast time. 
if it is good good pacemakers and good competitors. But like London can be different. Boston, you can forget about fast time. So it's like which race you want to go. I re- I would love to go to Boston. I would love to go to London. Uh, Rotterdam to defend my title. But yeah, um, I have to plan. You know, run some one day. Uh, when I'm not getting too old, uh, Berlin or Valencia, uh, and see what time I can run. But um, I, I think maybe European record would be nice. But the rest I see. You know, I think like New York. Nobody will take away from me in New York. Uh, and I think titles are more important than time. So for me, it's, um, yeah, I prefer to win uh, London and Chicago and, and Boston than uh, um, 20250, for example. Yeah. So what, what, what motivates you? I guess you said it's the titles. You have the Olympic medal. You have a world marathon major title. What's like, what else and how many more do you want to accomplish in your career? It is funny. Uh, before New York, already I have checked. It was fifteen October. I have already write down uh, after New York, whatever happens, how many days I will take off. When shall I start? You know, jogging and biking and doing exercise. When will be my first track session? I've already wrote down before even New York. So I was telling my manager, I'm looking forward so much for the next season because I know what I did, what I can do better, what I did wrong before Paris, and now I feel like I, I needed more, like three weeks. Before the, for New York, I will be in my best shape ever. So I'm really looking forward for the next season to start again. And it is crazy that you are that you feel like you are starting the marathon now while I'm running I don't know 23 marathons now. So um, yeah, I think as long as you are fit and you can compete on the highest level, that gives you a lot of motivation. Yeah, this is your 23rd marathon. I think something something like that 22, 23, maybe 24 even. Wow, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, you've been running the marathon since 2014, right? Yeah, yeah. I started very slow. Uh, if you if you build up, it's funny. Every minute I have run two, from 211 to yeah. Yeah, it was 211, yeah. then 2015, 210, 213, 208, 206, 207, 209, 204, 205, 204. It's only getting faster. Yeah. That's a good trend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In Absolutely. in those 10 years of marathoning, yes, there's like the super shoes and everything. But ha- has that been difficult for you to keep up with the changes and, and all of the, the fueling and all of the different stuff that have you, – your 2014 marathon is very different than 2024. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I have even some uh, arguments with my manager, you know, if, if I, and I'm very – there is someone who talk very easily and too fast sometimes, uh, which is I will choose. And then later I will give a comment and not everyone will be happy with that. And with the full, the same, a uh, lot of things are coming. When shall I change? Sometimes you are a little bit late. Sometimes I'm more, you know, old school. I don't want to, um, you know, I just even start late to, to use heart rate and things like that. Before I was like, you know, no, just the way the Kenyans train. And then I will discover, okay, you're not the Kenyan, you're not that fast as them and and they can run crazy trainings you can't do that you have to upgrade so better use you know other things so i was every time i was discovering new thing and every marathon i was like i was trying to do new thing new stuff try new thing and and that was make made my marathons i think um excited so every time i was looking forward to the next season to the next marathon and uh, and then we had the, the and running team was coming up later and everything there was this excitement uh, in the marathon, it was not never boring. Mm-hmm. Well, Abdi, thank you so much for taking the time to recap this incredible race and sharing with us very honestly about all the ups and the downs since Paris. And it, you know, if this trend is is going the right way, uh, then it, we're definitely excited for for twenty twenty five with you. But thank you so much. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you. <laughs>